Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. I know some of you have been jonesing for some shorter videos amidst all my recent vlogs, so that's what I've got for you today. Nice, short, and sweet what I eat in a day video. All the recipes will be in the description box below. Huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. More on that at the end. I started off my day with a cup of decaf coffee. I have been trying to wean myself off of creamer and just use a little bit of almond or soy milk. So I have uh, just some unsweetened plain soy milk and my favorite stevia drops that I show in pretty much every video now. Then for breakfast, super duper simple, I had some overnight oats. I made these with half coconut milk and half water. I sweetened them with some vanilla stevia drops and served them with some frozen mango chunks that I had just defrosted. This is pretty much the only way I can eat oatmeal now, cold, made with coconut milk. I'm not about it any other way, it's just super delicious. I wanted that nice carby breakfast to get me through my leg day workout and immediately after I got home from that, a few hours later, I made a protein shake. I had just replenished my stash of the Garden of Life chocolate protein. This is one of my favorites. It goes on sale at Sprouts pretty often. And I make this with half water, half soy milk, and I also added in a scoop of my greens powder by Amazing Grass. Have this pretty much every day. A little bit later, I had one of my current favorite breakfast slash lunch recipes as of late, avocado toast with a really easy bruschetta on top. Bruschetta. <laughs> I chopped up some grape tomatoes along with lots of fresh basil, also pro tip. If you have a Trader Joe's nearby you, it's the best place to buy fresh basil because they give you a ginormous carton, best deal for the price. Anyway, to the tomatoes, I add some garlic powder, just cause it's not as potent as raw fresh garlic, know what I'm saying? Also added some red pepper flakes, black pepper, salt, and a little bit of olive oil. Now you may know from previous videos, I got a bread machine recently. I'm in love with it. I cut up a nice slice of my homemade multi-grain bread and I made it super toasty using a griddle pan. Usually I just use a toaster, but I watched the bruschetta episode on Jamie Oliver's YouTube channel. I'll link it down below. The bread just looked really good toasted on the griddle. So I did that today. I mashed half of an avocado on there and then I topped it with my bruschetta. To get in some extra greens, I had a side of arugula with that. I tossed it with a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice, and salt. Then I remembered I had just bought this balsamic glaze from Trader Joe's. So tasty and sweet. I can't wait to use this on pizza sometime soon. It's really good on salads as well. Waited a few hours after that meal and went on my evening run before coming home to make dinner. And I had this sudden craving for chicken pot pie that morning. I don't know why I barely ever even had chicken pot pie growing up or before I went vegan, but it just struck me. So for that, I sauteed some mushrooms until they had shrunk down quite a bit. Then I added celery, onion, and garlic, and I continued to saute that till it was slightly browned. Finally, I added in a big bag of frozen mixed veggies and some vegan chicken. This is the first time I used the strips by Morningstar and I thought they were pretty good. They have a very similar texture to the Beyond Meat chicken strips, but they're a little bit more affordable. Now the faux chicken came already seasoned, so I didn't need to add too much to the pot pie. I just added a little bit of rosemary and thyme and then some of my homemade vegan butter and some flour and I stirred to coat all my veggies in that. Then I poured in some of the vegan chicken flavored broth by Better Than Bouillon. And I also added some plain unsweetened soy milk and let that simmer for a minute or so to thicken up. I transferred the mixture to a pie pan and I covered it with a sheet of puff pastry. A lot of brands are accidentally vegan, just double check that it's not an all butter puff pastry. But I brushed that with some soy milk and baked it for about 25 minutes until it was golden brown. And this meal is very comforting. I really enjoyed it. All right, that's everything I ate on this day. I would have had dessert, but let's face it, puff pastry is not really a healthy food. So I had to check myself before I uh, wrecked myself because I did, I did have a carton of Ben and Jerry's peanut butter half-baked, still in the freezer actually, but I refrained. 
So thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you haven't heard about Squarespace yet from my previous video, stick around. I wanna thank them so much for sponsoring this video. I use them to design my recipe blog, sarahsvegankitchen.com. Incredibly intuitive, easy to learn and use, lots of beautiful award-winning templates to choose from and then customize to your exact preferences. They also have amazing 24 seven support, awesome investment if you're wanting to take your business or your hobby your passion to the next level. So if you're interested in a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, you can go to squarespace.com slash Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. Have that link down below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.